remember those, of, uh, those that have gone before us, the veterans, and there's plenty of veterans around here. Let's hear it for all the veterans. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's hear it for the veterans. Okay, because they're the ones we need to look after. I'm in the army, I get paid, I've got a job, I get looked after. I know what I'm in for, but sometimes when you get out of the army, life is a little bit more difficult. So we like to look after our veterans. But also, we want to think about the other people that are in the army community. So we've got the cadets. Let's hear it for the cadets. Okay, a really, really important youth organisation. Okay, although they wear military uniforms that are actually part of the army, but they are part of our community. The community is a big thing for us here in Aldershot. Okay, the army's been here for an extraordinarily long time. We came here in 1854 when the army reforms came into way and the army was looking for somewhere to train its forces. And like many of us looking for a house, Aldershot wasn't the first location. They wanted to go to Rygate, but they couldn't afford to move there. It was too expensive. So they came to Aldershot and we've been here ever since. It started off fairly small, but it's lasted. Unlike many garrisons that are there to support royal palaces, Aldershot is quite unique in the fact that Queen, Queen Victoria actually came to Aldershot to support the army, which is quite novel in its concept. Uh, those of you who will have seen the rotunda, uh, that's where you know Queen Victoria hung out and we had uh, the Victoria Day parade here, remembering her roles uh, around the local community only a week or so ago. Now over the years we've done a lot to support the British forces. Forces launched from here to go and fight in the Crimea and there was a lot of training that went on here. Similarly, in the First World War we went off from here to fight in the, with the British Expeditionary Force as part of the First Corps. And those of you that want to venture around in the local area you'll see plenty of links to that. If you go up on Caesar's camp you can see the old trenches they used to train in and stuff like that. Similarly in the Second World War uh, the First Corps launched from here again as part of the British Expeditionary Force. But the links throughout the Second World War here are quite strong. If you go to some of the training areas you'll find uh, you know, training obstacles that were built to practice for the D-Day landings and things like that. Hitler's bunker and all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff here done you know, during the war and as part of the forces deploying to the war. Also, last week we remembered the 40th anniversary of the victory in the Falklands. A very big parade, a lot of paratroopers proudly marching around the town. And that is enough. Let's hear it for the paratroopers. Let's see that one coming. Support our paras. But Aldershot was very proud to play its part in that. And that's kind of stamped a lot on the, uh, you know, the, the local community. And it still has a very good relationship with the parachute regiment, even though the parachute regiment have moved off to uh, Colchester now, or in the early 2000s. But what have we got here now? Okay, we're still a big community. Okay, there's 10 barracks within this garrison town. We've got 463 buildings, two churches, one cathedral, one temple. I've got 652 acres of military estate, nine and a half miles of publicly accessible road that you probably all drive on and seven square kilometres of training estate that butts onto Aldershot Town. So the town really is a big part of the military endeavours that go on in the local area. We're home to Home Command, which is the second most important headquarters in the British Army. It's the controlling headquarters for all the supporting activity that goes on in the Army and it plays a big part in what the Army delivers across the world. Within that, you've got Standing Joint Command, which is the headquarters that controls operations within the UK. And most recently, that was the controlling headquarters for Op Rescript. So all the soldiers you saw deploying out to provide testing, uh, to test lorry drivers, to work in, ho in hospitals and things like that, they are all deployed through the headquarters in Aldershot, which commanded that. We've got Regional Command, which is responsible for all the military estate across the United Kingdom, Germany and Brunei. So pretty big responsibility sat here. But on top of that, we've got three brigade headquarters, the 101st Operational Support Brigade, the 
Army Special Operations Brigade and the 11th Security Force Assistance Brigade. On top of that, we've got five major units. The Grenadier Guards, the Irish Guards, four Ranger, 27 Regiment RLC and 10 Regiment Queen's Own Gurkha Logistic Regiment. We've got more coming, nine Regiment. Uh, Remy starts to form up here this summer and that will bring the total number of soldiers resident within the garrison to roughly 5,000, so still a pretty big part of the community. But on top of that, we average about 1,000 soldiers from here transiting every week on courses, resettlement and various other activities. We've also got about 5,000 families and dependents in the local community. And we also provide uh, job, opportunities, job opportunities. We've probably got about 800 civil servants and contractors working in the garrison. So all in all, that's about 12,000 uh, 12, people that live in or are supported by the garrison. So I'd like to thank you as all the shot town for all the support you give to us, our families and the whole military community. Thank you very much. And now over to the band.